I'm back for another video. This is going to be my review for American Horror Story uh, Hotel Episode 8. So the episode picks up where it left off after um, Homegirl got ran over by that truck last the other time. Um, yeah. So the girl done died um, and he remembers that he saw her in the um in one of the coffins when he uh, came across Holden and Alex. So he go back to the hotel. You know, we finally see uh Liz, the uh Liz Taylor. You know, uh he she still feeling some type of way cuz Lady Gaga done sliced the throat of her boo. And you know, she's trying to keep herself together so John come walking up in there like, "Where he at, girl?" She was like, what you mean? Who you talking about? She was like, the man that you've been hiding in this hotel that's been killing all these folks. He was like, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, girl. I mean, she said, I don't know what you're talking about. He was like, listen. I saw the girl that was living up in that, that was living up in here. She committed suicide to protect him. And she was like, girl, he, she was old enough to make her own choices. So then he come over there and called himself trying to trying to man uh manhandle Liz Taylor. And she said, look, put your hands on me again. And I'm gonna slice your throat while you sleep. And so Sally take him up to room 64 because he was like, you know, I'm. She said, I'm gonna take you where the man is. So they get up in the room. And she was telling him about how this, 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 you know, this was James March's office. And this is where he died. And so she tells him to look behind the armoire and there's a vault there. So he walk up in there and there's, I believe it was like seven or eight, maybe different, like, uh, I guess you can call them vases of the different body parts of the people. Like you had the tongue for thou shalt not bear false witness that he had the two hearts of the twins from thou shalt not bear false wit i mean that honor thy father and thy mother and you know a lot of other stuff now mind you some of those things were from james march's murders like the teeth of them migrant workers that was working on a sunday but then a lot of the newer ones basically all of the different murders that he's came to and learned of those are like the new murders but then to make a long story short which a lot of you know a lot of y'all was was right that uh john was is actually the ten commandments killer and and i wish and 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 like james colwell said that makes the writing a little like sloppy because because everybody had kind of came to that predicament that uh not predicament but everybody had kind of came to that conclusion i was hoping that we were going to find out that it was somebody else but you know basically you know we find out that john is the, is the ten commandments killer next scene uh, we see detective han is at the uh, it looks like the place where they do autopsies mind you I don't, I'm, I'm assuming that detective han didn't notice this about her but i did you know all of her wounds are healed she don't even look like she's been in the car accident she just looked like she laying there asleep um at the as of right now nobody knows where john is because the uh the cop or whatever, or security lady, whatever she was, basically like when, um, she was like after all the commotion, he did he disappeared. So I'm assuming that they knew that he broke her out of the uh, hospital, um, and I guess maybe somebody was saying that uh, you know the guy that was with her, he just up and left. So. While Detective Han is in there uh, with Ren's body, John walks up in there and was basically, basically like, "I want to confess." Um, to you know the Ten Commandment killings, he was basically talking about how, and this is where we find out. And I think I, he is twisting some kind of hard. But anyway, I, th <laughs> I think I said this in my review that. After um, they, him and Detective Han did that case where the uh, the daddy had bought the heater for the family because the power got cut off and they died of carbon monoxide poison. Then he shot himself in the head and he was gone for the whole weekend. I think I remember saying that he was at the Hotel Cortez, but we find out that's where. Well, he was at another club first, but then I guess they closed up early and he was still trying to get turned up. So he went to the Hotel Cortez. He get there. Sally is sitting at the bar, 
and uh, Liz is working the bar and Donovan is sitting over in the corner. And so he get up to the bar. Oh, I was sleepy, y'all. He get up to the bar and Donovan come over there and was basically like, you know, do you want to quit the party going upstairs? And you talking about how you trying to he because uh he was like, girl, I ain't into that type of stuff. I, I'm, I'm married. I don't do that freaky deaky stuff. He was like, it ain't that kind of party. But if you're trying to get turned up like you said you was, you need to come up here with me. So they go upstairs and they go to uh, Countess and James are having one of their monthly meetings. And so they walk up in there. Um, he introduces John to James. Um... You know, he's a detective. He had a hard night. So he was basically like, what's the tea? He was like, um, you know, uh, you know, did you, um, did anybody die? Did you have to un uh, shoot off your revolver or something like that? He said, he was like, no, but people died for children. There's still brains all over the floor, all over the ceiling. And James was like, um, you sound real calm about all this. Like, it don't bother you. He was like, well... It don't like death is just it seems like death is the best thing about life. And so at this particular point, James is all intrigued because I guess, you know, in his mind, it's like this man is just is talking about death like it ain't nothing. So he will be the perfect successor. So, you know, they have this whole conversation. You know, it's obvious that John has a lot of rage bent up in him. He was talking about how he would like to be able to just beat up a suspect versus just putting handcuffs on him. And then, you know, talk. he was talking about how, you know, sometimes you know somebody's guilty, but then the courts release, you know, the jury vote counts him as not guilty and he gets released back into the city. And he was like, you know, I can look at somebody and tell when they're guilty. So to make a long story short, um... John, I'm sorry, James was telling the counselors like he's the one. He's gonna be my successor. And counselors was like, I don't think so. He still got hope. And he was like, basically, I need your help. She's like, why would I help you? He was like, because he got children. Two beautiful children. And that's when he look up. Um, she gives he gives her John's wallet and she looks in and sees uh Holden. And um, so then basically, you know, he he was, you know, he was drunk off of the absinthe or whatever it was he was drinking. So from that time, he had them passed back out. So they, you know, then he wake up in front of his house in the car. He walked back up in the house. Oh, me. He walked back up in the house. Alex is pissed. She like, girl, where you been? Detective Han been done tried to cover for you for like a day and a half. And you just been gone. Ain't nobody knew where you was. I was calling your job. I was calling your mama house. I was looking all over for you. And he was like, I won't cheat on you, girl. She was like, I know that because if you were cheating, you would have called me and lied about where you was. And uh, so when Holden come up in there, he was like, do you want to go to the beach after school? Because I saw rode by and saw a carnival. He was like, yeah. And so they left. And that was pretty much it for that scene. So in the ne <laughs> So in the next scene, we pick up after the family went to the beach and Holden got kidnapped and come to find out that after his first encounter with March, John was going back to the Hotel Cortez on a regular basis, which helps us to understand because I know a lot of us was asking like, why, why is this dude moving into this hotel and why is he continuing to stay in the hotel when he knew you know, a lot of the stuff that was going on at the hotel, but now we find out because he was spending so much time there on anyway before he decided to move in. And, um, you know, uh, John Marsh was basically running, running, running game on him, trying to get him to be his successor. The first time, um, you know, they were talking. Basically, John is just fed up with the, with the, with the, with the laws and the judicial, ju judicial system because he feel like the same laws that i'm trying to up, uphold and protect and serve these are the same laws that ain't doing nothing to help me find my son it's kind of like you know after a while it kind of like they just gave up hope and stopped looking for him basically and he like but i'm doing all i can busting my back day in and day out to, to bring y'all criminals and stuff and y'all can't even help me find my son girl what so 
um there was one scene where james march took him to his little room where he'd be keeping the body parts and stuff and he's found they come across march's accountant he was basically like you know he was robbing me so he had to go nigga he had to go and john was like girl you crazy and he left but eventually he comes back after um I, if I'm not mistaken, there was this court case where this killer got off. And so, he killed a little boy. I think it was... No, that was, no, that's two different cases. But anyway, the killer got off. And so, he goes back to the hotel. He pissed off. He's talking about how, you know, Holden would have been 10 years old today if he was still uh, uh, alive or well, he is still alive. But, you know, if he was still here. Well, I think at that particular point, they had kind of felt like he hadn't died. So they were like, you know, if he was still alive, he um would be 10. And so it, it goes into this whole backstory talking about how some dude came in with his nephew. Or was it his son? The man came in there with somebody and apparently I guess he was doing some child pornography type stuff because he had some pictures. Of little, well, we saw one picture of the little boy with his shirt off and then it was some other pictures. So I'm assuming he was doing like some child pornography. So John was like, where this nigga at? So... He goes to the man's house. I'm assuming that the, the man had something on Craigslist that he was trying to sell because when John comes to the crib, he was like, you know, I saw your ad on Craigslist. He was like, you got the money? And he, I don't know what he said, but the man opened the door and let him up in there. And, um, you know, the man pulled, had this box. He opened it up. I don't, I don't think we saw what was in there. But John got a sledgehammer. The man was like, you can do whatever you want to do after you give me my money. And so John threw them pictures on the table. He was like, girl, you got to get up out of here because I ain't got time for this mess. He was like, girl, you checked into the, co the Hotel Cortez with that boy. And where he at? Did you make him disappear? Like, what, what's the deal? And so the dude was like, girl, I'm, I'm about to call the police. John was like, pulled up his shirt and showed his badge. and like, I beat you to it. Then he beat the dude with a sledgehammer and kill him. And so... Meanwhile, all of this stuff that we're seeing is him reiterating what happened with he's talking to Detective Han and Detective Han was like, girl. Detective Han basically think the dude is crazy because, I mean, mind you, he was living, he was in an insane asylum. So, you know, he just feel like the man just going crazy, especially you talking about you've been talking to James March and James March been dead for some 50 some odd years or more. But you've been talking, you've been having dental, dinner with James March, girl. So, um, you know what? Wouldn't have been like so twisted and so crazy if Detective Han would have had turned out to be, have been the killer. And now, when I think about it, I think that was the reason why I ran, took off, and got ran across the street and got hit by that car because I don't think she. I don't know, maybe she didn't want to be around when John found out that he was actually the one that's been doing these killings. Um, and then, I wonder, is that why Sally had been so intrigued with John? Because she had been trying to get with John since he first came to the hotel. Because if y'all remember, when he came there that first time, after that, um, after the family got killed, you remember Sally was about to try to go over there and spit, spit a rap to him, spit some game to him, and then that's when Donovan intervened. So, you know, she'd been trying to get with John for a minute, knowing that the man was married. Um, but anyway, so yeah, y'all. I cut Detective Hans pinging us off. Okay, so, okay, it, it, it was a lot, and I ain't gonna go into it, but to make a long story short, Detective Hans was trying to do his best to convince John that he's not a killer, but John is convinced in his mind that he is a killer. Um... So, you know, Detective Pine was like, girl, I know you. You ain't no killer. And he was like, yes, I am. And he took the scalpel and st stabbed him. And he was like, thou shalt not commit, uh, covet your neighbor's wife. And apparently, he been lusting after Alex since the beginning of time. And so he was like, if you... Uh, Admit what you done and I'll show you some mercy. He was like, girl, you don't deserve Alice. So he stabbed him. He go back to the Hotel Cortez. 
and uh, he walks up to the desk. Iris got that nervous way about her that she always got. Um, you know, she, you know, doing the little, the little chit chat thing. He was like, girl, you c cut the crap. I know, I know who I am and you know who I am. And she was like, oh, thank God. Cause uh, you know, they, everybody in the hotel knew that he was the 10 commandments killer, but they knew that he was bipolar. So they didn't know if he was John the detective or he was John the murderer. So basically this whole time, everybody been walking on eggshells around him, but now it's like I'm John the murderer, so you know now everybody can just be themselves and treat him like John the murderer. Then come to find out that him and Sally been bumping cuckoo since the beginning of time, and I guess that's why in the episode, I think it was like two episodes ago, when they had woke up together and was in the bed together, and he was talking about you got to get up out of here, and she was like, "Girl, you want me? You love me, girl? We was getting it in all night." So they've been bumping each other's coop, you know, bump, you know, bumping it since the beginning of time. And, you know, he felt like uh, Alex and Detective Hine was, you know, doing something because he was talking. About, he told John that, you know, I met with your wife for coffee. She worried about you. She talked about how you, you know, stay gone for days at a time. And that's all he kept saying. Like, you had dinner with my wife, girl. And then come to find out that the man and woman that was that was a uh, adulterating with that ain't even the word adulterating that they was committing the adultery with each other uh, they he he the one that sent them them, te them text messages that and lured them to that hotel because um you know they was meeting at the hotel cortez every thursday and you know they used to like to get it in in the shower and you know he uh you know he so he didn't want to send them the text and would like come to the Bel Air hotel or wherever they was at and and you know killed them and took them, and he injected the man with some kind of like like numbing type medicine. So you know when he cut the man's tongues out and took his eyes, he didn't really feel it until after the the the, the drugs wore off. But basically, to make a long story short, he's basically done accepted. Um his his calling if you will as being a murderer and he's you know james patrick march number two pause going back to the scene where james told countess about you know about detective low having kids and he uh gave her uh john's wallet and she saw Holden. How does she even know they was gonna be at the beach that day? I mean, at the yeah, at the carnival that day for her to have been able to get there and get and, and snatch holding up off the Ferris wheel. But um, yeah, this episode it we 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 got a lot of John's backstory in this episode. You know, as far as you know his connection to the hotel because, like I said before, it was just so weird how he was just so comfortable how he was so comfortable to leave his house and go stay at the Hotel Cortez. Mind you, he was only been there for three weeks, but it seemed like he was there longer than that, I guess because he had been at the hotel for like six or seven episodes. But um, apparently he'd been going to the Hotel Cortez for, for five years. That You know, that was his hangout spot. And, you know, when he wanted to go click-clack with Sally, that's where he would go. Um, But, yeah, y'all, that was pretty much it for American Horror Story. So... Let me see. I I can do shout outs for this show because there ain't a lot of them. Um, you got James Colwell, Lady Nika, C Minted, Justin J, Much Love from KY, Ashley Miller, Alexander Rogers, and I and that's it. And uh Tammy B. Yeah, Tammy B. And that's it, y'all. Yeah, that's it. So I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.